It has an engine from a Golf R, a transmission from a 911, and wheels the size of a small country. Zero to 60 in around six seconds, puts it in the same league as a 2014 Honda Civic Si. But it's not just about acceleration times. I need to do it some justice. It's the best handling SUV I've ever driven. It weighs about 1,800 kilos, which is only 400 more than the aforementioned Golf R. And the seven-speed PDK makes it incredibly fun to drive. Now, when it comes to driving this overpriced Mazda CX-5, this is why one would spend 45 grand to get in one of these. It feels closer to a sports car than an SUV. You can wreak havoc on both the street and the track. And if you get some of the upper trim levels, like a GTS or a Turbo, I can guarantee that this is the most fun you can have in an SUV, period. What really surprised me is one, that it has launch control in the base model and two, how easy it is to operate. You know, in some cars, it's easier to send nukes to China than it is to engage launch control. This one's different though. Sport mode, one foot on the brake, full throttle with the other foot, build boost, and here we go. Oh. And that's 60. Okay, I'm not legally allowed to tell you how many times I've done that at a red light, but you get the point. Let's talk about what kind of drugs made me buy a two liter rich soccer mom SUV for 45 grand. Just as a reminder, I could have bought this, 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 and even this. So what the fuck? Well, before I bought this Macan, I had a 2011 Porsche Panamera Turbo and each service cost me about $4,000. So I'd rather spend my hard-earned cheese on some Trek decks rather than brake pads for 2,500 bucks. You see, this Porsche is a certified pre-owned vehicle, which means if something breaks, I don't have to pay shit. So essentially, I bought this car because I'm petrified of service bills after my traumatic experience with the Panamera, but as a bonus, I can redline it at every stoplight and don't have to worry about my turbo blowing up. But that's not the only reason. <sighs> you see, as far as reliable dailies go, I think the Macan is way up there in the list. It's fast, not too expensive, has all the modern features you'd expect. Overall, it's a great fucking car. But like with everything in life, there's always something that spoils the party, like a hair in the soup or a fart in a spacesuit. Now let's talk about the downsides besides the two liter Golf engine and the outrageous price. If you ever drove a Porsche, you know that everything in the car is set up for speed and power as one would expect. The two cars that don't have the same feeling though are the Cayenne and the Macan. Now I get why this is the case for the Cayenne, given its enormous size and weight. But the Macan, it's tiny compared to other popular SUVs, sits pretty low, has everything going for him in terms of sportiness. But if you jump from any other Porsche into this one, the first things you're gonna notice is how light the steering wheel is and how <laughs> and how floppy the paddles are. Generally, the lighter the steering, the worse you can feel and control the car. Same goes for pedals. That's why race car pedals are so tight that it feels like you're pushing your foot into a brick wall. That's a real bummer, considering you would drive this every day. The biggest downside, however, is not the light steering wheel nor the floppy gas and brake pedals. It's the price. Now, for 45 grand with a CPO, this is a hell of a car that I love very much. But a new one of these with this exact spec would set you back $79,000, which is fucking crazy. For the same amount of money, you can buy a new RS5, a C8 Corvette, an M4, a C63, or a used 911. That is the definition of insanity when it comes to pricing. 
We've talked about the downsides and the reasoning behind the purchase. Now let's talk about how it all feels. Back when I bought this car, I didn't even test drive it. I knew I wanted a Porsche after my last one. And at the moment, this is the only one that I could afford. So I just bought it. I distinctively remember the overwhelming feeling of joy I had on the whole drive home. Of course, at first it was pure fucking terror because I couldn't figure out how any of it worked, like how to adjust the steering wheel, how the car play worked, all the buttons. But coming back to that feeling of joy, I can confidently say that it stayed with me. I owned the car for four months now, I think, and I smile like an idiot every time I put my foot to the floor and hear that PDK fart. It's a great car. It's not for everyone, but it doesn't have to be. Each little nugget has its own unique audience that knows every single thing about them. And also, it makes me look like a lawyer's son when driving it.